Soil School on realagriculture.com is brought to you by The Mosaic Company. On this episode of The Soil School, we're focusing on biologicals. We're pleased to be joined by Dion Pierce and Matt Souter of Mosaic Biosciences. And uh, we'll start with you, Matt. Uh, when it comes to biologicals, of course, that's a, it's a very broad term. Lots of different categories that producers need to uh, navigate through when it comes to figuring out biologicals, potential impact they could have on their crop production. That's, that's correct. Biologicals are a, is a very broad term. And unfortunately, there's not a great deal of definition from an industry standpoint. So oftentimes people talk about biologicals and they might mean biostimulants or they might mean a live microbe population. Most of where we work today is is focused on live microbe populations enhancing nutrient use efficiency. Okay, so how, can you explain or break it down in, in layman's terms, I guess, uh, how a, a live microbe works, how that helps the plant? Yeah, absolutely. Most of our products are bacterial, although you can have live microbes that are fungi uh, that are applied to a crop as well. It, they each may have slightly different modes of actions. For our products, the bacterial uh, live microbes, they actually go in and, and, and as an application colonize the root and work in the rhizosphere around the crop root. In that instance, those microbes will uh, uh, solubilize additional nutrients from the rhizosphere and as those are solubilized and more available, then they also help with uptake into the plant. If we can increase uptake and, and overall nutrient presence in the plant at the right growth stage, we should be able to impact yield. Okay, yield and also more fertilizer use efficiency. That's always welcome, economic and environmental reasons. Yeah, it's a great idea. Don't don't leave it out there to go somewhere else. The more you get in the plant, the better off we all are. Yeah, this might be a question you get sometimes, Matt. But uh, we already have bacteria in the soil. Why do we need to to add more or add different? bacteria populations? It, it's a great question and I do get that question a lot, Kelvin. You know, the, the fact of the matter is that there are bacteria in the soil, but not all of them are automatically beneficial and they're not necessarily present in the in the volumes or in the proportion that gives us the responses that we see in a purchased product. So, uh, you know, the reality is that we often get questions, people are interested in saying, can we apply it only once and will it be there for years to come? Um, maybe the best analogy is when we think about volunteer crops or we think about other things, well, gosh, you've already got wheat in that field, why would you plant it again? Uh, and the fact of the matter is, um, biological systems are incredibly resilient and soil systems are incredibly resilient. So we're only nudging the system one direction for a certain amount of time, and that will buffer itself back to what the natural state is every time. When we bring a biological product, a biological microbe back into the system, that improvement is only a 30 to 60 day improvement with the plant. So we create a colony that's effective for a certain amount of time. And over time, the plant, the soil, the entire natural system is going to move back to its natural state as much as it can. We see it in crops. It's no different below ground. Okay. Do you find geographic differences in terms of soil microbe populations and, and responses to, to products like the ones that you're working on? Yeah, occasionally we see some differences, but they're not terribly consistent. Probably the, the reality is there's not as much magic as you would think about performance or placement in this, in this uh, space yet. There are places where we see improvements that are not necessarily, we would think, organic matter or pH or other things like that. If you have actively growing crops, you have a reasonable amount of soil moisture, you have a decent temperature, all of those are prerequisites for those bacteria to really come to life and, and do what they do. The only place where I think we really see an advantage is where we see a little conservation tillage or conservation practices, whether it's reduced till, no till, strip till, any of those sort of things. And I'm not convinced that that in itself means that it's because of pH or organic matter or those things. I think it's the soil structure because when you force roots and bacteria into the same channels, you increase the opportunity for those to interact. And conservation tillage, where you have improved soil structure, does exactly that. So Dion, from your perspective, uh, lots of different companies offering biological products. Uh, you look in the, the category at the trade show or in, in, the, in, in the media uh, out there, uh, lots of different companies and, and products to, to wade through. How do you recommend a producer approach that? Well, you're correct. There, it's really tough for growers and uh, retailers uh, today to navigate through uh, all the, the the number of biological companies are starting to hit the market. Uh, one I would really focus on is their their data and their information science based. Um, is it uh, considered applied science in the field? Um, do they have more than one year of data? Do they have numerous data points, not just you know one farm? Um, do, are they doing campaigns year to year, different crops? 
different regions, um, don't be afraid to ask the tough questions. Uh, what's the shelf life? Where are, where are these, whether it be an organism or, or a metabolite, whatever type of product it may be, ask that, that, that manufacturer, you know, how are these uh, uh, products made? Where are they developed? Where do they come from? Um, what are our expectations on, again, shelf life, ROI, et cetera? And like I said, ask the tough questions up front and, and make sure that you understand exactly how that product's supposed to be applied and how it's not supposed to be applied. Yeah. Of course, I, I, yeah, I think we often, we want to see that data to know that something actually works, but there's also the practical logistical side, and that's where shelf life, in terms of how you're going to implement some new technology or product on your, on your farm, you need to know uh, the, the practical aspect of it as well. Exactly. And, and to kind of take a next step, also compatibility. Uh, you can't ask a grower to make another trip across the field. It has to fit uh, current production practices. Um, so whether that be tank mix or going on dry or going into a liquid or pre-blend, um, you know, how is this product applied and how does it affect current production practices that a grower do, is doing? And also as a retailer, does it fit or does it, does it marry into our, our current offerings or, and how we would uh, uh, position a product in, in the market with a grower. Okay. Back to you, Matt, in terms of live microbes in, and that practical, the logistics of handling and, and application on, on the farm, uh, what do you see as some of the main issues that producers need to work through or, or considerations uh, when implementing or, or trying something new like this? Well, the, the biggest issue is that oftentimes live microbes create a response in the crop that's not tremendous. Uh, there have been some claims in the marketplace that seem pretty fantastic if it's too good to be true. You know, uh, to Dion's point, you really want to go yeah. back and check the science. But I think the big issue is uh, if you're going to set up a trial side by side, make sure you're not using other biologicals uh, in, in, in the untreated check area. Try and make sure you get a read on what it actually does. Um, and then in addition to that, you're going to need to make sure you're calibrated so that you can pick up small differences. Most of the time, in live micro populations, you see less than 5%, oftentimes in the 2% range of yield advantage. But if you can do that consistently for the right economic uh, value, then it is still of, of benefit. Yeah, for sure. What about down the road? Uh, talking about improved nutrient use efficiency right now with these live microbes, what do you see as potential applications or, or breakthroughs, new uh, new things coming down the pipe? Uh, everybody's working on this in a lot of in a lot of different ways, and so I think as an industry, we've really probably uh, begun to hit our stride. If you look back 20 or 30 years ago. Uh, bacteria in particular was a place where people said, gosh, we just don't get the response or the consistency we need. Today, our consistency is uh, tentatively 80% range most of the time for a win rate, which is arguably as good as a lot of herbicides uh, when you look at what, what came out of development for herbicide companies. Going into the future, I think we'll continue to see improvements. Uh, I think you'll see other novel pieces come forward, whether those are fungal uh, opportunities or, or other things that are available. Um, the, the industry continues to develop and it's very hard to predict where that's going to go. We also see that happening from a regulatory standpoint and as those regulatory frameworks come together and, and create the channels for us to have common categories of chemistry and categories of microbes, uh, we'll, we'll see other things get clearer about what we can project for the future. Okay. And finally then, Dion, from your perspective, maybe add to what Matt was just talking about uh, in terms of producers adopting biologicals and, and some of these products. Uh, in the past, I think it's, or up until now, maybe it's been kind of your leading edge producers that like to mm -hmm. experiment with certain things. Do you see some of these products becoming mainstream or, or actually like a, a common practice kind of thing, something that goes right there along with what we've always done? Um, I do. Right now, if you look at the market, it's kind of a groundswell. Um, I don't have to name names. All the major players, they're starting to put a lot of investment in resources behind the technology on in research around these products. Um, you know, we think of wedding agents and adjuvants, you know, 20, 30 years ago, and now they're mainstream. Um, we feel that the biologicals are also going to hit that mainstream. And really, one of the reasons is there is more science and technology behind these, and it is proven, as well as the economics are there. You know, we're able to mass produce, we're much more efficient, and we're much, to Matt's point, much more consistent. And so it's going to be just standard, hey, this is going to go in the tank, this is going to be riding with our fertility or on our fertility and they're not going to think about it. It's going to go in the tank because they see the efficiencies and they see the ROI behind using these technologies. All right. Matt, Dion, thank you for your time today. Thank you. Absolutely. Enjoyed it.